Welcome to Trading Nation. I'm Sarah Eisen. Stock seeing a volatile start to the month of May. The Dow trading within a striking distance of a correction. This is we see a flood of earnings reports, a Fed meeting, a jobs number on Friday. Let's bring in the Trading Nation team to make sense of all of it. Gina Sanchez is with Shantico Global. Matt Mealy is with Miller Tayback. Matt, you say the price action this week could actually set the tone for the rest of the second quarter. Explain. Well, it's just that, you know, we've, one of the things we've seen is that, uh, you know, some things have changed since January, uh, whether it be to talk on trade, whether it be tech regulation. Certainly the, uh, the Fed has uh, started to shrink its balance sheet in a more, uh, more aggressive way. Uh, so there's certain things that uh, you know, have, have made it a little bit tougher when we were priced for perfection like we were back in January. But all the, everybody's been saying, well, don't worry, the earnings season gonna, is going to bail us out. And sure enough, we've had a fabulous earnings season so far, and, but we're only halfway through it. But the, the problem is that this, for these fabulous earnings, of up 20% or actually more than 20%, hasn't moved this, the S&P at all. In fact, the S&P is actually down slightly since the uh, earnings season began. And uh, so it, you know, it's when you know, everybody's talking about worried about, you know, is it a high water mark and peak profits and things like that. But whatever it is, the, the fact that we are priced for perfection before, if we can't get the, the rest of earnings season, really it's going to come through the rest of this week and maybe early in the next week, if that can't be a catalyst to take the market higher, uh, these other issues, I think, are going to re reassert themselves, and that could pose a problem for the market. So we really need the next week or so, maybe 10 days, is going to be very, very important. Gina, what is the market reaction to earnings, which have been better, but investors don't appear to impress, tell you about where we go from here? Um, well, I think that it's telling you that a lot of those downside risks are really starting to get priced into the market. Now, that's healthy. This market has been stretched for some time. And so P.E. levels were simply at, at uh, levels that I don't think could have been sustained. Um, however, the fact that the market isn't rallying at every potential sign for, pos for, positive, um, for positive growth or, or, or any positive news, that tells me uh, that the market is losing steam. And actually, there are still lots of positive signs out there. Uh, you, um, GDP growth came in at the high end of expectation. Um, we're seeing uh, lots of other elements around growth. You know, capacity utilization is very tight. These are all positive things, and yet the market is not... Uh, buying it and what that tells you it is, is pricing in at least a slowdown um, and you know we're not expecting a peak until 2019 so we should actually continue to see expansion uh, but the market was just priced too highly and it's coming to a different level. Matt have the benefits for corporations to that steep corporate cat tax cut that we finally got passed in December been fully reflected in valuations in the market? Well you know, that's uh, I think so. Yes, I mean you look. You look at what's happened in the last. I mean, really, throughout the entire uh, bull market here, we've been because of this central bank liquidity. Uh, you know, it's not been the old, certainly not been the only driver of, of the bull market by any stretch of the imagination. But it, we, we're going through. You know average GDP return, uh, annual return, just over 2% versus a 4% return uh, historically. And yet somehow we're getting the second best uh, bull market in all, of all time. And we, and we also see, I mean, I know these people at Macro Mavens uh, talked a very interesting point where the, the, the S&P uh, has increased by $25 trillion uh, since the crisis. And yet uh, that's, I mean, and that's five times GDP growth, growth and 25 times earnings. So the market and the valuations have just gotten too far ahead of themselves. And so it, even, even though we've gotten this good news on the tax front, it's, it's, it's just too far ahead of, of, of what's really going on on a fundamental basis. And therefore, the market's going to come in a little bit. I mean, last year we had a situation where every good news, bad news, no matter what, the market went up. Went up. Now, not so much. So the, the psychology is starting to change a little bit. All right, Gina and Matt, thank you for joining me today. And thank you thank all you. for watching Training Nation. I'm Sarah Eisen. We'll see you next time. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.